Hello everyone, welcome to another video that I haven't prepared for. And uh, I apologize, I do have a little bit of the sniffles, so just bear with me on that. So why did I make this video? Well, my PC has a little bit of a problem. It's running a little hot under load, well, the CPU is anyway. So today, we're going to attempt to find out why that is, and hopefully solve that issue. So. This is going to be, I guess, a longer video, again, just like the last one. So sit back, relax, maybe grab a drink, and welcome to PC Maintenance Episode 1. Okay, now, just a little background. My CPU is a Core i7 8700K running at 4.7 GHz on all the cores, at 1.32 volts. Now, how is that hot, you may ask? Well, I don't know. I was searching on the forums around the internet and 1.32 volts and 4.7 gigahertz and all the cores should not be that hot, according to everyone's observations. Let alone for my cooler, I'm running on a 280 millimeter liquid cooler by Corsair. It's actually an H110i GTX. Very nice cooler. It's got RGB and all the stuff. So I'm not quite sure why it's acting like this. And I actually found out that it was running a little hot when I was encoding this video. See, this was from last video. It was the understanding CPUs one. And you can see that this is a 23 minute clip. Yes, it's it's very long. So when I was encoding this from MOV to MP4, because for some reason my video editing program wasn't reading it properly, this gave my CPU a lot of time to stabilize at its operating temperature when it's under full load. So let's run this encoder just so you know what the temperatures are like when it's fully being used. So, okay, here we go. So you can see how much the load is, what the temperatures are and everything. So this will give us a chance to make sure that the readings we are seeing on Corsair Link will coincide with the readings we see on CAM. So let's run this test and I will get back to you once the temperatures are a little more stable. So we'll see you then. Okay, so the stress test has been running for about I'd say 27 minutes, because it says right here. So our temperatures are in the high 80s to low 90s. And if you see here, I've actually opened up more diagnostic applications. So on Intel Extreme Utility, it's saying that I have a package temperature of 96. Oh my God, I just reached 96. Uh, 96 degrees right now, averaging at around 92 degrees down there and that goes the same with what Corsair Link 4 is saying. I have a package temperature of 90 something degrees, 91 right now, 92. What I'm guessing here is that I didn't apply the cooler properly. Yes, it's my fault. So a little backstory here. Back when I was building this very system, oh that's the warning from Cam. See right here, it shows and it knows that I've exceeded 90 something degrees there. Okay, so back to the, to the story. So when I was building this computer, let's mute this first. When I was building this computer, when I attached the cooler, it apparently already had its own thermal paste on it. And so I applied it, but I wasn't really sure if it was on there. So I took it off to look and there was already a little bit of thermal paste taken off the cooler and stuck onto the CPU. And I put it back. And supposedly that's not what you're supposed to do because that leaves little air gaps and air doesn't conduct heat quite as well as thermal paste is supposed to be. Thermal paste is supposed to fill in the gaps between the CPU heat spreader and the heat sink of the cooler to make sure thermal uh, conductivity is kept at a maximum. So, I'm guessing that it's because of the thermal paste problem. So, let's stop encoding this video and go get ourselves some thermal paste so we can replace this. And hopefully, we will see a dec uh, decline in temperatures. So, I'm just going to turn this off. You can see I've stopped the video encoding and the temperatures are back to 
well, I guess idle at 50 degrees, still a little high. So I'm really hoping that my hypothesis is correct. We'll only have to find out later. And if it's not correct, I have wasted $100 on thermal paste. So let's go and get ourselves some thermal paste. And we have got ourselves a box of Cooler Master Master Gel Maker. And I actually originally wanted uh, Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut for it. It's supposed to be one of the best ones out there that has a thermal conductivity of around 12.5, I think, uh, watts per meter Kelvin. This one has a slightly lower thermal conductivity of 11 watts per meter Kelvin, but should be more than enough, right? After all, I'm not even sure if my hypothesis is correct and Thermal Grizzly is supposed to be more expensive than this. So hopefully what I'm thinking is correct. So let's take the computer out of the table and this is going to be pain in the ass. Okay. Let's take it out. Let's remove the mouse pad and everything first. Oh yeah, there's no crap on the table. Clean workstation, my friends. Okay. Let's remove this fan too. Okay, now it's clear. So let's unplug all this crap. Check it out. Wires. Okay. So we got to turn off the power supply before anything else. Unplug Ethernet, unplug display out of the GPU, unplug the speakers, keyboard, USB, and all the other I.O. And that looks to be pretty freaking clear. So now we can take it out and bust this bad boy open while wow, the glass is still warm. Okay. Forgot to unplug the headset there. Gently. Gently, very gently. And they say, before moving any thermal paste, you should run the CPU at approximately full load so that the thermal paste has a chance to heat up and it'll be easier to remove. Yes, check it out. That is the interior of our computer. So this is our 280 millimeter liquid cooler made by Corsair. We swapped out the fans for these nice Thermaltake ones, Thermaltake Ring 14 RGB, of course, because we all love RGB. Okay, so this stuff is very hot. So let's take it out carefully. Okay, so let's take our screwdriver, select, that looks like a small Phillips. Yeah, that makes that, that works. Okay. So we got to take out this header. You can actually feel that it's pretty hot. Even that heat sink is very hot. So let's just gently remove this cooler. Actually, these are thumb screws, but this just makes it a whole lot easier. Okay, cooler is loose and we will see what the thermal paste looks like, or the thermal paste spread looks like, once I have undone all this. Hopefully my hypothesis is correct. Please be correct. Otherwise I will have wasted $100 on thermal paste. Okay, yep, I think that's clear. Okay. A moment of truth, everyone. Was I right? Okay, let's just gently remove that. Okay. Okay. Wow. It appears I am correct. Take a look at that, people. Actually. Take a look at that, everyone. That is uneven thermal paste. If you can see that, that is very, very uneven thermal paste. And you can look at all the gaps in there. Look at all the gaps. Hey, I was right. At least it looks like I'm right. And if you look under here, even on the heatsink, it's not properly covered. 
So our CPU has all this heat, but it simply does not have enough thermal paste to make good contact such that the heat transfer is good. So that's why we're seeing all these high temperatures. Why don't I just leave this here first? And what I'm going to do is try to remove the thermal paste goop. So, mini unboxing video everyone. So here's what we got, okay. Nothing in there. So we have our thermal paste syringe. We have, uh, it looks like a spatula or an ice cream spoon. And we have grease cleaner, apparently. So, okay, once opened, please seal it after use and store in an airtight container to keep from dry and don't swallow it. Okay, <laughs> thank you for that. First order of business, wiping the thermal paste off the CPU. Let's see if I can do this properly. Okay. <laughs> Never mind that, everybody. Looks like it's coming off pretty well. I hope you can see this properly, guys. Hey, this is cleaning out pretty fast. Okay, yep, I think that's pretty well done. Now we have to do this heat, the heat sink. Okay, ooh, that's a lot. But I think we'll manage. So this thing is actually being bottlenecked by the poor application of the heat sink itself. Look at that. This grease cleaner is excellent. Now, there's just a shadow where that stuff used to be in. So we have our filter paper and now we can remove the last bit of goop from the bottom of our heat sink. And yeah, looks pretty good to me. What do you think? Yep, any more on the CPU. It did get rid of some gunk. Any more in the CPU? If there is, it should be wiped off by this. Pretty shiny. Okay, everyone. We are done removing all the thermal paste off the CPU, and now it's time to open this up and apply our own layer. So we're gonna do the grain of rice method, because that's frankly the easiest to do. So in the right in the center of the CPU, apply just a little bit. There. That is approximately a grain of rice, maybe a little thick. But it's okay. As long as we don't put too little, it should be okay. And we are going to not make the same mistake as last time and put the heat sink straight down. We will not look at it. Okay, so it's been around the same time as we took last time, 28 minutes on the same video file. And it looks like our temperatures have improved by like three or something degrees. There it's hitting 86 and on the other readings it's reading 93 and 93 again. Cam saying a lower reading, this one, uh, Intel Extreme Tuning Utility and Corsair Link are reporting approximately the same temperatures. So, I mean, one to two degrees difference. That's, that's not that big. So, cool, I guess. I guess the moral of the story here is that there we go, there's a warning, it's hit 91, let's just mute that. So I guess the moral of the story here is that no matter how badly you think you screwed up the application of your heatsink, it'll still work approximately the same way as if you did properly apply it. So uh, yeah, $100 well spent, and uh, 
yeah, okay. Uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Uh, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification icon next to it so you don't miss any future videos. Post your questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, or suggestions down in the comments below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. This video totally had a point. <laughs>